Hello friends, welcome back to uh, this uh, third part in the series on the repair of this little Dunhill nose warmer. Um, in the last episode we had just finished getting the stem to fit properly and hopefully you can see that is a nice tight, uh, you can't see it, it's light tight, but if you hold it up to light it, it, it matches the, the shank very well. One of the problems is that there is still this uh, bit of a ledge, so the shank is a little bit bigger than the stem, and we need to deal with that. But it's fitting nicely, and you know, we got a nice squeaky fit, and uh, we should be good with that. So, moving on to the stumble now, uh, there's quite a few things that we have to do here. And I got in touch with the owner uh, because some of the stuff, you know, essentially we're going to wind up refinishing most of this pipe. Um, Possibly the whole thing. I'm going to try to not do the whole pipe, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens. So the problem I just mentioned, um, the fact that the shank is 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 thicker or larger diameter than the stem. Uh, the only options we have is we could make a new stem or we could thin down the shank. And I'd rather keep the original stem. I don't know why it doesn't match up. Um, but there, there's some oddity going on with this. So it, it's a very slight, like maybe, oh, I don't know. It's a, it's a very small change that we're going to have to make. So I'm going to very gently sand that. And I'll do that with just some regular uh, sandpaper, this, this Abernet sandpaper I like to use. Uh, I use these nail boards really as backings for the, for the sandpaper, so I'll just take it. And I'll just go in and, and just very carefully try to limit myself to, you, if you can see, there's a bit of a, the way the pipe is, is designed is that it, it sort of comes off straight and then slopes down a little bit here, like about a quarter inch. So I will try to limit myself to that quarter inch and keep the profile looking good all the way around, uh, but just sort of feather this in so that it matches up well. Uh, the other thing is that there's this odd ridge on the pipe that uh, I don't know if I was able to really point that out, but you can kind of see it's got a little chin to it there, um, which just, it doesn't feel right. It's a discontinuity as you, as you rub your fingers across. It's almost like this pipe was not finished uh, before they, was not, they, they didn't finish with the final shaping and sanding before they put the, the uh, finish on it. So that will also have to be sanded down, and I'll tell you a bit more about that process in a second. But the main thing we need to deal with right now, I'm going to put the stem aside because it's going to get in the way. The main thing we have to do right now is do something with this, um, this crack that you can see right there. Now, the... The best way to deal with a crack always is to close that crack up to get the wood to glue to the wood. But in this case, I do believe that this is a crack that was caused because there was tension in the wood, and uh, you know it was probably not fully dry when it was when it was um, drilled, is my guess. And just over time, as it dried out, it it uh, contracted more and cracked. It would be really difficult to put enough pressure on that to clamp it and honestly I think that it it would risk putting a crack on the other side and it will probably not hold it will open up again so I'm not going to try to close this crack up I'm just going to fill it so to do that the first thing I need to do is try to clean it out as best I can and I'm going to just use some uh, index card and just go in there and Kind of try to, I don't want to open it up more because it will extend, uh, but just get any sort of debris or dirt that might be in there, just to try to get a nice clean surface for our uh, epoxy to, to grab onto. Now if you're worried about epoxy in the bowl, um, you don't have to be. The epoxy, once it's fully cured, is, is relatively inert, but you wouldn't want to burn it and smoke it. so. I get that. Um, what we are going to do, don't want to tear the card off in there, that would be bad. Uh, and by the way, these things are just mildly abrasive. They, they make a pretty good cleaner. So what we're going to do, um, 
once we get this all clean, let me just cut this in half so I can use some of the other edges. Once we get this all cleaned, we're going to um, mix up some epoxy with briar dust and very carefully force it into that hole as best we can. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to do a light sanding here just to remove the finish so that there's... Um, Actually, I don't really need to do that because I don't want the stuff sticking out here. So, okay, never mind. I won't be. I won't be doing a light sanding. Um, we'll get the epoxy down in that crack as best we can. We're going to mix the epoxy with a bit of briar dust, which will hopefully allow it. It doesn't do anything in terms of the strength. It actually probably makes it a little bit weaker. But... I'm hoping that it will allow us to uh, have that epoxy pick up some stain. And since I use the slow cure um, G Flex epoxy, it's gonna it's gonna have to sit for 24 hours until we can we can sand it. But that's okay. We want to fix the pipe. We don't want to fix it quickly. We want to fix it right. All right. So that's as clean as I think I can get it. Um, for the epoxy, I will need a little mixing plate. Um, let me get out the, the epoxy here. So this is what I'm using. It's uh, G Flex 655. Really fantastic stuff. It's a bit pricey, but you know the tubes last a long time. If you're used to using this stuff, and I, and I do use this occasionally for things, but but not for cases where I want to have a really good seal um, or really permanent. So I would never use this to like put a tannin in, uh, but maybe to set a band in place if if needed. Uh, and this is fine, and you know it costs a couple dollars and it lasts a really long time. These tubes, uh, I forget what I paid for them, but it, but it was. Uh, probably more than $20 for the two tubes. I've been using them, and I, I repair a lot of pipes. I've been using them for a year and a half, two years now, uh, and haven't had to replace them yet. So, you know, the, it, it's an investment, but if you're doing a lot of this work, it's, uh, it's well worth the investment. So I'm just gonna put out two equally sized globs here. And you know, I, I've done a lot of work with epoxy in my uh, fly rod building days, and there's all sorts of things you can do with epoxy. I mean, I know people that weigh it out and, uh, you know, really go crazy or use syringes to, to put out exactly the right volumes. And then mixing it is an art form. Uh, and, and this is all really true. Uh, I'm not I'm not in any way saying those folks aren't right but I found that if you get approximately the same size glob as you can see there of both the uh, the epoxy and the hardener you're gonna be okay it's not that sensitive it what it will change is the curing time uh, so it may take longer or shorter to cure depending on how much hardener you put in but this stuff cures over uh, 24 to 48 hours, so we got plenty of working time, and I'm not worried about it. So the first thing we're going to do is mix that, and this is a this has to be really well mixed. So I'll spend a good uh, five to ten minutes doing this, and I'm going to edit out that five to ten minutes because you'll be very bored with it. Um, so this is going to have. You can see this is a this is a relatively thick epoxy, which for this application is is both good and bad. So it might be too thick to really get it into that crack, and we do want it to to go all the way through. But at the same time, if it's too thin, it will just run out of the crack. So uh, it, we're we're going to benefit from the thickness, and we're also going to have a little bit of a problem with the thickness, and we'll we'll work that through. I could thin it. Um, you can thin epoxy just by putting a drop of alcohol in it, but then it would probably go too far and just wouldn't be useful for what we're trying to do. So we're going to keep it as is. All right, I'm going to mix this for a lot longer and I'll bring you back when I'm ready for the next step. 
All right, so I pretty much spent another five minutes mixing this, and it's uh, it's well mixed now, which is good. So the next step is going to be to add some briar dust. Now, where are you going to get briar dust? Well, you're going to sand briar and collect it, and that's about the only thing you can do. So I've got a little tube here that I occasionally will refill um, and it is literally just taking a piece of sandpaper like this dragging a piece of briar across it brushing the dust off onto a card and transferring it to this vial nothing exciting nothing easy either um, so I'm gonna add some and you might want to know how much I'm gonna add and the answer is I don't know I'm gonna add it till it looks right so there's some Need a little bit more than that for sure. There we go. And again, the idea behind this is simply to have something to take up the stain. And it seems to work. If you add too much, you're going to actually impact on the, the epoxy's properties but a little bit just kind of suspends in there and yeah that's about what we're looking for a nice sort of tannish brown color oh, got some extra over there we'll get that mixed in now if this was a five minute epoxy well, it would be hard by now, um, but you'd be rushing on this next step, and that this is not something you want to rush. So, it's worth the extra curing time just to have the time to do it right. And honestly, it uh, the slow cures just to me seem to be a better choice in terms of durability. All righty, let me set the. Actually, let me grab an alcohol wipe. I've talked about these before. These little alcohol wipes that you can get at the drugstore for you know, folks that have to give themselves insulin injections. They're great to keep around. You can, you can use them to clean up things. And epoxy cleans up really well with alcohol. So I, I use them a lot when I'm working with epoxy. Okay, now how are we going to do this? So I did uh, take a minute to just wipe this down with some alcohol, um, and we, we are going to, you know, do a lot of cleaning on this and finishing. But since we got to do sanding on it, we might as well wait until we're we're ready to to put the new finish on before we do any additional touch up. All right, so I'm just going to take a toothpick and see if I can how much luck I have just kind of drizzling this in, and we're going to have to do some forcing, but. Let's start with that. And then I'm just going to take a piece of another piece of index card here and I'm going to push on that. And that seems to be working. And I really like to get that completely filled. Trying to force the epoxy down into that crack. And I think we're making some headway. I'm going to drag it in a little bit with the card. Slowly, surely. Um, all right, folks, I'm not going to bore you with another 10 minutes of this. So I'll cut and bring you back when I'm done putting the epoxy onto the crack. All right, folks, um, that took a little bit of time, but 
hopefully you can see I, it's actually starting to come out from the inside of the crack there which is what we were hoping to achieve so that means that this crack is completely filled um, I'm gonna take a little bit of let's see I'll try one of these I don't know how well this is gonna work uh, this is one of these makeup pads which are useful for cleaning a lot um, I'm just gonna wipe off the rim yeah, I'm hoping to not leave a lot of cotton behind. Huh, I'll have to look. Um, I'll, I'll use an alcohol pad. And we'll wipe the outside. I'm trying not to put a lot of alcohol in. And we'll get a piece of paper towel to wipe off the alcohol. And I'm going to add a bit more epoxy. Uh, so <clears throat> up until now, I've just made sure that the crack is, is filled. Now I want to put a little bit of extra on just to make sure. Oh, geez, I'm getting epoxy stuck to my fingers here. Um, I didn't say it was a neat job. Okay. So we want to make sure that there's enough material there so that when we sand it back, the crack is, is masked. So I'm just going to add some extra right above the crack. I'm just trying to tease off the big extra bits. There we have it. Okay, so that now has to set for at least 24 hours and preferably 48 hours before we sand it. And I'll do that. I think we're, we're still short enough because I'm going to edit out a lot of the epoxy mixing and stuff. So we'll do that. I'll bring you back and we'll start to sand that down uh, and maybe finish up this video once the, the crack is fully sanded. And we're ready to move on to other parts. Of well, we let this sit well beyond uh, 48 hours. Uh, got tied up in other things, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is quite hard. Uh, and one of the nice things about this epoxy is that I, I find the five minute epoxy when it when it's completely cured, it's actually a little soft, a little gummy. This is like a, like a hard plastic or, or even a glass. It's it's very very hard. And we need to start to bring that down so that we don't have a big glob of epoxy on the pipe. So to do that, I'm going to start off with a file just because this is tough enough and I don't want... And the nice thing about the file is it's not going to conform at all. So, you know, sandpaper, even on one of those backing boards, can ride over the hump and then you wind up sanding outside of the area that you actually want to sand whereas the file is going to only address the area that is higher than everything else we know it's not going to bend and start to hit the, the edges and hopefully you can see the color change where that's being filed so it's just starting to take off the very top and as i think i mentioned earlier this will be um, lightly topped, so it doesn't matter if we scratch a little bit. And that's, I mean, the charring is not really that bad. We could probably clean this, but we're going to have to refinish it anyway, so we might as well just do a few swipes with sandpaper and have it looking perfect. The sides I, I don't worry about as much because they're round, but this, uh, we, we don't want this to get too far out of line with the rest of the rim. And I am 
I'm sure that you guys all have plenty of knowledge about how to use files, but uh, it's always good to have a file card available to, to clean out the file, especially when you're dealing with acrylic, epoxy, ebonite. Those things really do load files, in my opinion, more quickly than metal. Uh, also, you'll notice I'm, I'm taking care to only file in one direction. Um, there's all sorts of arguments about this pro and con. It's the way I was taught to use a file. So with very few exceptions, when I'm using a file, I only go in one direction. Um, I believe that it actually increases the longevity of the file. The argument is that when you drag it backwards, you are um, crushing the teeth. Now, the truth is most of the things we file are a lot softer than the metal of the file, so it's a little hard to say that I believe that. I also feel I have better control in one direction. That's actually looking pretty good. Still just a little tiny ridge that I can feel, but I will I will work on that. Uh, let's let's start to work on the sides a little. Now this I could just go right to sandpaper, but again I wanna take advantage of the rigidity of the file as much as I can. So I am only going in one direction. I'm, I'm filing and then lifting and coming back. The one place where I don't do that is on this sort of a file. Um, I use these a lot for shim, stem stem shaping there we go and you can see it, it's a cross cut and really there isn't a directionality to these teeth um, on the back there is but I don't use the back that often but this this portion I will uh, go both back and forth with it at times not not always and I actually keep several of these uh, here's a really old one and you can see how worn down the, the teeth are so if I need to do some really quick coursework where I'm going to be scrubbing back and forth, I'll use this one and save this one for more detailed work like this. So take care of your files and they will take care of you. It's been a public service announcement from the National Society for the Preservation of Files. Hey, you guys asked to see more of this kind of work. so. If that's what you want, you're going to have to put up with me talking while I do it. Okay, I'm starting to... I can feel pretty level there. We're going to do some sanding. And the inside is actually not bad. I'm just going to go straight to sanding for the inside. Uh, so I think we're good. Uh, we're good. We got the crack sealed. You know, that's that was the main uh, hope. So now we got to move on to this uh, this stem problem, and and this will be part of the general sanding. We'll finish this up, so I'm not not worried about it right now. Uh, the stem. So unfortunately, we're going to wind up messing up the Dunhill uh, stamping. There, there's no way around that unless we make a new stem, and that's not what the customer wanted. So. Yeah, let's let's try. So 
even something like this, I feel the file gives much better control at the start at least. But it's good to have a guide. So I'm going to try to put some tape down right about where I see that curve starting. This does not have to be absolutely perfect, but we strive for perfection, don't we? And that's pretty good. And this is just a warning. Do not uh, go beyond here. I don't know that I'm going to go to here, but I certainly don't want to go. So I want to I restrict my filing or sanding to the stem side of the, uh, the pipe. Now let's make sure we got the stem aligned and clocked. And there's my weapon of choice. This one needs to be cleaned a bit. This may be a little too, too non-aggressive. Uh, I'm trying to find the yeah, this is a number four. This is barely going to remove anything, but I like the wider. Um, for things like this, I like the wider platform, but eh, it's just so, so non-abrasive that we're actually doing more to the stem than... Hopefully you can see by the changing color what I'm trying to do here. I'm really trying to do very little removal of material as we get close to this piece of tape and the majority as we get as we're closer to the stem. And the hope is that we'll be able to bring everything into alignment with very minimal removal of briar. Because there is really just a tiny, tiny ridge there. Um, It's just above where I would say, I'm sorry, I think I'm out of shot there. It's just above where I would say we have to even do something. You know, if it was slightly less, I would probably just say live with it. Or I would live with it. I mean, of course, if the owner wanted it done, I'll do it. But I try to, try to minimize what I do to a pipe for not just because it is less work, but because it's more true to the origins of the pipe and it's less expensive for the owner. Let's face it, pipes are expensive enough. We don't need to be doubling the cost with restoration work. As much as I appreciate the fact that people pay me to do it, I also appreciate that you guys just want to have a nice pipe not a second mortgage. I can't see it, I have to actually feel it, which is good. Taking longer, more curved strokes in an attempt to not have any facets.
slowly work our way all the way around. And what will be the last pass with the file, just making sure that everything is smoothed out as much as possible and there's no ridges and we're good. That's it. I'm gonna oh wait one more right there. Got it. All right, I'm happy with that. And again, sanding is, is going to be required. Uh, so now the last problem is this ridge. And again, I, I don't want to just begin with sandpaper because I'm, I'm afraid the sandpaper is just going to ride over it and we're just going to wind up removing a lot of material. I'm going to use the same file actually. Um, let me get my, my crayon here and see if I can. Yeah, I was hoping to maybe be able to highlight it a bit, but that's not going to work out. So I'm just going to mark beginning right around there. still feel it here. That's pretty much the borders of where I'm going to work. And I'm not going to do too much of this on, on video. Hopefully you can see that that light area there. That is not, and that's just because that's where the file is hitting first. So it is actually a ridge. Very strange. All right, so now. essentially smoothed it out. It doesn't take a lot. Your fingers are very, very sensitive to uh, discontinuities and smooth shapes and so it doesn't have to be a large amount of material that has to be removed. Although in this case, you could actually see, I don't know how well it came out in the video, but you, you could, if you were in person, see this ridge. And I think I've removed about as much material as I'm going to, and now it's just a matter of shaping. So. Notice the strokes are more arcing now. Because before I just wanted to sort of take off the peak. Now I want to blend it in, so I'm doing more of a arcing stroke. close to sanding now. Alright, and I, I fear that I'm testing your your limits at this point, but uh, you know, sanding is just a matter of taking sandpaper 
and sanding. Um, now for this part here, I'm not using any backing because it's a curved surface and I want to do a little bit of blending on it. And then as we, where did I put my backing paddle? Oh, it's over here. As we move into the other areas, I will wrap the sandpaper around this and sort of do that sort of thing. So, since this is now getting into uh, pure tedium, and honestly you will see nothing different than what I'm doing right now and, until I'm done, uh, I'm going to finish the sanding, I'm going to call this video to a close, and we'll come back in the last and final segment, and we'll stain the pipe and finish it. So I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, please like and comment. I uh, really look forward to your comments. And uh, by all means, if you enjoy this, subscribe and hit the notification button so you find out about future restoration videos. Thank you all, and I'll talk to you soon.